The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome. It is Transfiguration Sunday. Uh, this means today is the last day we get to sing Alleluia's for a time. Alleluia means praise ye Yahweh, praise ye the Lord. And we forego that praise during the season of Lent so that we can focus on contrition and repentance. We'll pick it up again on Easter Sunday. Um, this means Ash Wednesday is this coming Wednesday. Services at 10 and at 7 with ashes imposed at both services. Dinner be preceding the 7 p.m. service. And uh, also we have a voters meeting today immediately following the uh, 10.30 service. One item on the agenda, the rationale and, and um, the seeking approval to pursue a second pastor here at Good Shepherd. Order of service is printed mostly in the bulletin. Opening hymn, Tis Good Lord to Be Here, 414. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing verses 1 through 3 of Alleluia, Sing to Jesus.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is from Deuteronomy chapter 34. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev and the plain, that is, the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees as far as Zoar. And the Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to your offspring. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not go over there. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. He buried him in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. But, not, but no one knows the place of his burial to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes were undimmed and his vigor unabated. And the people of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. And there was not arisen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. None like him for all the signs and the wonders that the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh, and to all his servants, and to all his land, and for all the mighty power, and all the great deeds of terror that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 3. Therefore, holy brothers, you who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession, who was faithful to him who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. For Jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, as much more glory as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And we are his house. If indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting in our hope. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Glory to you. Now about eight days after these sayings, he took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, Two men were talking with him, Moses 
And Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. As he was saying these things, a cloud came and in, overshadowed them. And they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Sermon texts from the Gospel lesson, particularly those words, This is my Son, the Chosen One. Listen to Him. Let everything be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses, as the Bible says. So Jesus takes with him Peter, James, and John up to the mountain where the three disciples are given this tremendous, incredible, mysterious experience. Jesus is transfigured before them. The same root word is for metamorphosis, a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. The appearance of his face is altered. His clothing becomes dazzling white. Then the experience expands to include Moses 
and Elijah, long dead, as if those representatives of the old covenant are bringing continuity to the one who embodies the new covenant, the new relationship with God. Then appears a cloud on the scene. You recall there was a cloud on Mount Sinai as well as part of the old covenant. Now the cloud appears again. The Lord is doing a new thing. And sure enough, we hear the voice of the Father in heaven. This is my son. Listen to him. This is the promised one. The Messiah promised many centuries before. There's not going to be another. Listen to him. Trouble is, we don't listen very well. To him or to one another. By nature, we're not good listeners. And my fear is we're getting worse. You've experienced it. You're in a conversation with another person about a serious matter. You're choosing your words carefully, expressing your thoughts. But then it becomes perfectly clear you've lost him. He's gone. He's not listening anymore. He's crafting his retort or his next story or maybe he's checking his phone that just buzzed and dinged and flashed, but he's not listening. Or you're a little worried about something, maybe a surgery coming up. You express that, and she does you one better, tells you about a surgery she had that was so much worse. Wasn't listening. Or you're getting acquainted with someone new and you're trying to be kind, asking all kinds of questions of himself as if he were the most interesting person in all the world and that's all you can do because he never asks anything of you. It's one of those one-way conversations. He is perfectly content to carry on with his autobiography and never stops to listen. You're married, you've experienced it. There's a disagreement, an argument, and one or the other, both or both, stops listening altogether. And for the next couple of hours, you each retreat instead into cold, silent isolation. Part of what's wrong with the human condition is that we don't listen very well. We get so fixated on ourselves, our own troubles, our own needs, or we get so comfortable in the ideological silos that we live in, created for us by internet algorithms. We get so convinced of our perspectives, so entrenched and intolerant of anything else, that we conclude that everyone else must be poorly informed, or they've been duped, or they're just evil. Listening to one another is such a count, simple concept, and yet it's one we really struggle with. Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote, the first service that, owes, that we, one owes to others is listening to them. Just as the love of God begins with listening to his word, so the beginning of love for our brothers and sisters is learning to listen to them. By nature, we're not very good listeners, but another problem is when we do listen, we tune in to the wrong voices. Instead of listening to Jesus, who speaks only truth, we tune in to screen idols, who, like Peter, don't always know what they're saying or why. Recently on ABC's The View, a self-important celebrity, an actress, asserted that the Holocaust wasn't about race. It's about man's inhumanity to man. Of course, she's uninformed. Of course, Hitler insisted the Germanic Aryans were superior to all other races. And of course, he maintained the Jews were an inferior race and then targeted them for extermination. If that's not racism, I don't know what is. But she had a platform. She had a bias. And like many other cele celebrities and politicians, she used it to enthusiastically educate us on a subject about which 
he could not write a serious two-page essay. Who else does this? Who else speaks with presumed authority on things of which we know very little? Who speaks with a sense of moral superiority? In our culture, that would be every one of us, I think. Everyone with a smartphone, everyone with a Twitter account, everyone with a classroom of students, everyone at the helm of a business, everyone with an election coming up, everyone has a microphone. Be careful then who you listen to. First John chapter 4, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. That a woman is a brilliant actress does not qualify her to rewrite history. That a man is a gifted athlete does not make him an infectious disease expert. That a politician keeps saying the same thing over and over and over again does not make it true. Be careful who you listen to. Adam and Eve listened to the serpent when they should have listened to God and remembered his words. The kings of Israel listened to their advisors and their gut instinct when they should have listened to the prophets. Pilate listened to the crowd when he should have listened to Jesus. Be careful who you listen to. Jesus said, see that no one leads you astray, for many will come saying, I am the Christ. That is, there will be many imposters who pretend to have all the answers. Stay away from them. Don't listen to them. From 2 Timothy chapter 3, and as I read this, think about some of our politicians, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people. Don't follow them on social media. Don't listen to them. There are some people that we shouldn't listen to. Avoid such people, the Bible says. This is my son. Listen to him. Listen to Jesus. He speaks to us through his word. His word is his voice. So one of my professors at the seminary suggested that when you first look at a text appointed for the coming Sunday, close the door, turn off your phone, get rid of all the distractions you can, and read it over ten times slowly, quietly, don't start forming your own thoughts. Don't read about what others have said about this text. Just let God's word speak to you. This is my son. Listen to him. The father isn't telling us to listen to Jesus or else. He's telling us to listen to Jesus because. Because the father loves us. Father is pointing us to his son because he knows Jesus is the truth and therefore he is trustworthy. He speaks only truth. We can trust him in a world full of untrustworthy voices. Jesus never tries to persuade a crowd with half-truths or with exaggerations or with self-serving lies like our politicians do. He never blurts out poorly formed opinions like our celebrities do. He never tries to draw you in with uninhibited sensationalism like our media does. 
He never misleads you with red herrings or euphemisms or hyperboles. He's never swayed by political bias like so many in academia are. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no matter what anyone else says, no one comes to the Father except through him. When you want something better, something higher than the standard fare doled out by the mouths of politicians and celebrities and academics, or anyone with a smartphone for that matter, then you're going to have to listen to him when you want something higher and better. Because his thoughts are not your thoughts, and his ways are not your ways, as the heavens are higher than the earth. So are his ways higher than your ways, and his thoughts than your thoughts. When you worry about your faith, how little you have of it left, how it flickers and sputters and is at risk of going out altogether, that's not the time to disengage. That's the time to lean in and listen to him, because faith comes by hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. When you're tired and worn out, Listen to him, because he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle, lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When you feel inconsequential in the world, and it's a number, listen to him, because he says, I know my own. My own know me, and I lay down my life for the sheep. You're not inconsequential, not in his eyes. When you feel most sinful and unworthy, listen to him. Because he says it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick, not come to call the righteous sinners. When you're worried about your children, your grandchildren, the choices they're making, how they're drifting from the faith, listen to him. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself, deny himself. When the world leaves you wondering whether we might be teetering on the brink, listen to him. I have said these things to you that in in me, you may have peace. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. When you need some assurance that you're safe, listen to him. Because he says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, they follow me. I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. Listen to him. Because there's no one else who gives what he gives. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. To Peter, James, John, and on that day, to you and me on this day, the voice from the cloud, the voice of your loving Father pointed to Jesus. This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand to sing the creedal hymn, 953.
We pray for Joseph Hasslinger, who is recovering from surgery. Also for Suzanne Le Pen, Bob Lippert, Chad Frenzel, Dorothy Wagner, Wally Kurtz, Stephen Porter, Pastor Matthew Martin, Phyllis Zelmer, and Burl Beely. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That our Lord, who has gathered us to pray, would hear our petitions and open our eyes to see the redemption he has accomplished for us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church of God, that she would be illuminated with resurrection light and so tell the world of Christ's deliverance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For teachers of righteousness in our generation, that the God who appointed Moses would bring up new Joshua's to guide us in the days to come, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a sure confidence in Christ, that we would serve him even as he faithfully cares for us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who have been placed in authority over us, that they would serve with integrity and honor, having the welfare of all in mind. And for our country, that division, conflict, strife would give way to unity, peace, quietness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the troubled, the sick, the dying, that by the prayers of Christ himself, they would be brought through their trials. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Heavenly Father, God of all concord, it is your gracious will that your children on earth live together in harmony and peace. Defeat the plans of all those who would stir up violence and strife. Destroy the weapons of those who delight in war and bloodshed. And according to your will, end all conflicts in the world, especially between Russia and Ukraine. Teach us to examine our hearts that we may recognize our own inclination toward envy, malice, hatred, enmity. Help us by your word and spirit to search our heart and to root out the evil that would lead to strife and discord so that in our lives we may be at peace with all people. Fill us with zeal for the work of your church and the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which alone can bring that peace which is beyond all understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember on this day the glorious manifestation of your Son's divinity on the Mount of Transfiguration. Teach us to listen to Jesus and ever fix our eyes on him and his innocent suffering and death for our forgiveness. By your grace and mercy, strengthen us to remain faithful in all circumstances of trial, temptation, and persecution. Preserve us to the end, that we may die a blessed death, believing in your beloved Son with whom you are well pleased. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.